and we're live. Okay, I like to use videos as part of this class for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, first of all, at least you can have some idea of who I am and what I look like and all that kind of thing. Uh, later on in the semester, we'll probably get together and then I'll get some idea of of who you folks are and you'll get the opportunity to meet each other as well uh, which is always kind of fun um, but anyway this way um, you know you, you have in a sense a, a, a real person not just uh, somebody who's who's put a lot of words on paper uh, you know on, on your computer to talk to you about this so um, you know I'm, I'm Professor Chernowski and I will be with you this semester as we delve into the world of literature. Um, I've stated it a couple of times the first week. My goal is to make sure that you come to enjoy literature even more now than you, even more during the semester than you do now. Okay, so we want to explore literature. Um, I'm a big believer in the idea that literature only has meaning and that it has meaning for you as a reader so when the ideas that you get from literature don't coincide with what other people get that's not wrong okay uh, and that's why we have people comment on each other's ideas in the essays because people may put something up there that that you never thought of and that you would never think of but you're learning from them they're learning from you I have the opportunity to learn from all of you okay uh, and your your ideas may be very different from what any critic has ever written about it. That's okay. Critics are people who uh, kind of get paid to put forth their ideas, so sometimes they're a little forced as well. We're looking for your natural reactions, your natural ideas. So do not be afraid to write your ideas about literature. Um, they aren't going to be wrong, okay, as long as you can kind of justify where they come from, what brings them about. and each of us is in a different place as a person each of us is in a different place in life we are all different people so we are all going to uh, have different interpretations of things because our interpretations are colored by the lives we have led and even if we are twins no two of us has led the same life okay so uh, keep that in mind as you do as you read and think about pieces of literature and write about them um, that uh, your ideas are going to be colored by your own life. After all, the author created the ideas in literature basically from his own ideas and what he had in his life, but his life isn't going to be the same as yours. In fact, I can't remember which, which uh, poet it was who stated the idea that when I wrote this, two people knew what it meant for sure me and God and he said but now there's only one meaning only God I don't even remember exactly where I was when I wrote this so keep that in mind <clears throat> excuse me as you uh, go about writing your essays because we're looking for you to give us your ideas not somebody else's so these are the essays that you write are not things that you need to research they really we want you to read comfortably and react sometimes you'll have to read things twice and that's okay Okay, so uh, this week we want to talk a little bit about the concept of plot and what plot actually is. A very simple definition of plot, overly simple I suppose, is that plot is the arrangements of incidents in a piece of literature. It's the order that they are given to us in. Now, why is it important to think about this? Well, first of all, um, in life, we lead things, we, we you know, we lead a, a linear life. You know, we go from August 1st to August 31st or whatever, and the days come one after another. In literature, they are not necessarily so, right? Literature can bounce all over the place. So as you're reading literature, keep in mind that it is not necessarily linear. The first thing that you're told is not necessarily the first thing that happened, okay? Sometimes in stories, the first thing that we're told is actually the last thing that happened and then they give us details that lead us to that first thing okay so uh, you know keep that in mind uh, in plot 
things can bounce all over the place. They are not necessarily in a chronological order or a linear order. The author arranges things in plot uh, to help us better understand the ideas that he wants us to get. Also part of plot is based on the characters that we meet there. So the characters involved in a story are part of the plot. They, they help make the plot what it is. Um, stories generally will deal with people, created people most of the time, but our plot will transpire, will occur based on what the people in these stories are doing. Okay, So, um, you know, keep in mind that the plot to some degree is based on the characters too. So characterization is a part of plot. And where a story takes place can be a part of a plot too. An author deliberately chooses a place to put a story. Frequently it's the place that that author is most familiar with, but not necessarily, okay? And so the actual setting for a story, and we'll detail setting later on in the semester too, but you know what the term setting means all by itself. The actual setting of a story can be part of a plot, okay? So plot is a series of interrelated actions um, that help us to understand what the author is trying to say to us or help the story have meaning for us. Now, in, in this week's story, it's important that you understand, and this week's story is a rose for Emily. It starts on page 82 in your book, I believe, um, and it's written by William Faulkner. Um, in this week's story, we get a plot that kind of moves all over the place. In a certain sense, we start at the very end. Okay, we start at the end of the story, and, and then throughout the rest of the story, we learn all of the things that bring us to the end of the story. Um, what we see in the beginning is not the, the total, total, complete end. We'll see that actually at the end end, but, but it's, it's right next to being the end of the story that we see at the beginning. And then all the way through, we see incidents that occur that, that help bring about what happens in the end, okay? So realize that. Realize that, that this is not a chronological plot in A Rose for Emily. It's a plot where you start here, and then you come back to here, and then you bounce around in through here, and you end up way back here again, okay? Keep in mind that this story is set in a different time and a different place. It's set in the Old South in the United States uh, when ladies were ladies um, and were expected to kind of go by the code of being ladies. You know, not in today's world where um, the term ladies has almost disappeared. In this story, we're dealing with ladies who are expected to act like ladies, okay? And you all know what that term means, okay? Um, so, as you go about writing your essays each week, Try to make sure you use details to make your points really clear. Don't just be kind of foggy and be all over the place. Okay, you know, we don't want to be all over here. We don't want to be like the rider who mounted his horse and rode off in all directions. We want to use some details. Do not retell the story. Now, I can't comment yet on your first essays because, in all honesty, I haven't read them yet. They aren't due until today, you know, and so, so I haven't read them yet. Um, I expect some of them to come in pretty well into the evening tonight, and that's okay because I gave you till today, okay? Um, but try to use as many specifics as possible, but be willing to say what things really mean to you. And then when you go back in to comment on two other students' essays, be willing to be honest. You don't do them any good by saying, oh, that was good, I agree. No, go into detail, uh, even when you do that. You're only writing two or three or four or five sentences in your comments to other students but be willing to say something that's worth everybody's reading, okay? Um, nothing to fear here. You know, the important thing is be honest and be willing to say what you think. We're not going to be judgmental about you. We want to know what you think because we all learn from each other's experiences. So you guys have a good week. You know where to get in touch with me. I've already put that in, all the information, okay? Feel free to contact me whenever. Oh, one more thing. I got uh, a text from somebody today whose child just went into the hospital and so she was saying she's not going to get her essay in on time. You know what? Her child's more important to me than the essay is. So, you know, it's 
like, don't be afraid to tell me that kind of stuff. It will not hurt you. Just be honest. Keep in touch. Let me know what's going on. Have a good week.